last time on Dual Destinies. Justice again. In case you missed anything, let's fill you in on this case. Athena sent a guard flying. Turns out he wasn't the only one either. Ten Mataro was seen flying through the sky? Let's get cracking on that crime scene already. But we didn't get the scene we expected. Injustice, we trust! Can we just find a way to trust each other so we can fly through this investigation? This and more on Ace Attorney Dual Destinies, next. All right, welcome to the investigation portion of this. It's very similar to the investigation in the first five or six, whatever, if you got Miles Edge with Ace Attorney games, except in this one, you get to actually look around a bit. It's pretty cool, actually. I do like how they upgraded this. Let's take a look at this thing on the table. So this is where Alderman Cubie's body was found. Apparently the murder weapon, a spear, had Mertenma's prints on it. That's not good. Never fear, Detective Fulbright is here. Yeah. Of course, I can't offer you any information on my investigation, so... In the name of justice, I must say goodbye. Um, what was that all about? Your mother! Um, okay, uh, how about this? It's a folding screen. I wonder what they were using it for. I read that the Japanese used to use these in drafty rooms, but now they're just for show. You mean, like my attorney's badge? Mm. Poor Athena. That cop treating her like a child must have really bothered her. Okay, so we searched that. Oh, another cool little feature is the end actually tells you what you searched already. So that's another improvement over the other Ace Attorney games. You don't have to worry about searching the same thing over and over again. Because you know what you've searched. So what's this? There's something wedged under this chair. Let's see if we can lift it up and... Freeze! No disturbing crime scene evidence, even if you are the mayor's lawyers. He does have a point there. Hey, Detective Fulbright, did you hear about that attack over on Yokai Lane? I hear an elderly woman was assaulted by a strange yokai shaped like a roll of cloth. And you waited till now to tell me? I better get over there at once, and just as we trust! That was surprisingly easy. Okay, Apollo. Now's our chance to look around some more. The more I get to know her, the scarier she gets. Hope she never finds my weakness. I'm really into anime. Whatever this is, it's stuck on tight. Looks like a large bloodstained cloth. The blood's probably the Alderman's. But it's pretty far from his body. Wonder how it got here. Why does this seem important? And we have a little thingy on the ground over hither. The Forbidden Chamber. They say the demon Ten Matara was imprisoned in there before his, uh, escape. Think we could get this door open? It's worth a try. No good. Shut tight. I don't even see a keyhole. Seems pretty hopeless. Injustice we trust! Not this shit again! Did I just hear the voice of someone in need? Allow me to fill you in. This door simply will not open. We tried and tried, but it won't budge. It's an essential part of the culture found in this manner, so we can't blow it up either! So, and an openable door. Right. According to Miss Jinxie Tenma, it was shut tight when she came across the crime scene. Thanks for the tip, Detective Fulbright. We didn't expect you to be so helpful. Ah, forget 
that I said that. So, the Forbidden Chamber was shut tight at the time of the murder. Sounds like something I'd better keep in mind. Okay, now, uh, what haven't we examined over hither? This one's a spear, but what about this one? It looks like a giant pair of pliers. Looks like something a demon might use. Saw something like that in the manga once. Really? What are they used for? Oh, things like pinching through cheeks. <sighs> pulling out tongs. Stop! Stop! Oh, and you should see what they can do to a person's eyes. Okay, okay, I get the idea. But I'm sure this thing is just a simple can opener, or something like that. Demons eat canned food? I always wondered what they ate besides people. Whoops. Uh, oh, ooh, look at this shiny thing over here. Look at it! Hmm, what do we have here? Looks like a statue of the nine-tailed fox and ten Mataro battling it out. Uh, careful, Apollo. It's got blood on it. Really? Hey, you're right. I wonder if it's the Alderman's blood. How can you remain so calm after seeing all this blood? Well, this isn't the first I've seen something like this, so... You're no fun at all! At least act surprised or grossed out or something for my first case! I'm already a lawyer. You want me to be an actor, too? Okay, so we've examined that. There's some pottery up here. Look! A cat with two tails! No such thing. Oh, and look! This lady has a really long neck! <laughs> How funny is that? There's no way a creature like that could ever exist. She'd have a tough time swallowing. <sighs> Apollo, I bet you were one of those kids who didn't believe in Santa Claus. What's that got to do with anything? Got those, got those. Oh, there's something over here we missed. Hey, look, a window! Hey, this window opens. You know, like most windows do. And outside, we have ourselves a steep cliff. The window only opens about six inches. Not wide enough for anyone to get in or out. Look, Apollo, there's something caught in the window frame. It looks like gold fur. What a pretty color. It must be from some kind of animal. Wonder what it's doing here. Did Alderman QB have a pet fox? Guess that about wraps it up. Now, if only we could get that detective to tell us what he knows. Hey Apollo, do you hear something? Hmm? I don't hear anything. Alright, your hearing must not be as sensitive as mine. Um, what are you talking about? A whooshing sound, like wind rushing through a narrow strait. And the echo of someone's voice. N. N. Eat justice, we trust! Ah! <laughs> Someone's got a sharp set of ears! That was the sound of my righteous voice reverberating through the air ducts! I heard it through the air ducts? Yeah, check it out! But why would she hear you through there? Why don't we go to the diagram? As you can see, that vent is connected to an air duct that leads out into the hallway. The wind must have rushed through there. And carried my monologue with it straight to your ears! And what a unique monologue it was. 
I was just thinking. Maybe the killer made their escape through that air duct or something. <laughs> a cute theory, but I don't think so. The air duct in the hallway is low enough to climb into, that much is true. But as you can see, the vent in the ceiling is very high. Nine feet high, in fact. I highly doubt that there's any way to get up there without a ladder or something. And I don't see anything of the sort in this room. Do you? Mm, I guess you're right. Speaking of things in this room... Yeah? Can you tell us what you guys turned up, Detective Fulbright? Not on my watch, buddy! In the name of justice, I cannot reveal facts pertaining to the prosecution's case! Oh, come on! Throw us a bone here! Excuse me, Detective Fulbright, but I recall you saying earlier... ...that you would come running whenever we were in need. Ah, I suppose I did say that. Helping those in need is what justice is all about! But... But keeping information out of enemy hands is also a form of justice! <laughs> ah! What's justice is the most just! Why is this always so hard? Hmm, well, how about this? Let's do a little give and take. I mean, serving the public is part of justice too, right? You know, like the police motto? To serve and protect. I doubt leaking information to the defense team falls under that motto. Yes, of course! I must serve and well as protect. Okay, I will share some information. In the name of justice! We did it, Apollo! Yeah, we did it, alright. <sighs> But I'm not sure that was entirely ethical. Was it Miss Jinxie Tenma who first discovered the crime scene? That's right, and this photo shows what she saw when she opened the door. Miss Tenma had a key, allowing her immediate access. A key? So then the Fox Chamber was locked. Yes, and Miss Tenma had the only key to its door. Really? So Odom and QB didn't have a key to the Fox Chamber? Actually, he had a master key for most of the doors in the manor, but... It disappeared after his murder. Disappeared? You think the killer took it? It could very well be connected to the murder. We're looking into the possibility now. But it's the timing of Miss Tenma's discovery that I think is the most important. Of course, I'm not going to share that information with you. Ha ha ha! You think you're some kind of champion of justice, but you're just plain old mean. I won't fall for that, you shameless rascal! I only help good little boys and girls! Shameless rascal? Who even says that? Well, I wouldn't exactly call you a good little girl, either. Those feathers and tracks look like something a yokai might leave behind. You don't actually think the murderer was some sort of monster, do you? What's the name of that creature in the Forbidden Chamber? Tinma something? Because from the black feathers and big tracks, it looks like that creature did it. Our prime suspect would, no doubt, love to pin the blame on some imaginary creature. Can Tinma whatchamacallit even be made a victim of slander? I doubt the mayor would do something as childish as blaming a boogeyman. So the most likely scenario so far is... That Tinma guy left the feathers and tracks behind. To make it look like Yokai Tinma was the killer. Wait, what? 
Now I'm as confused as you! At any rate, I doubt Mayor Tenma would plant evidence like that. So, Mayor Tenma is your only suspect. That's right. Even his name, Damien Tenma, makes him sound like a villain. And he's really scary looking, too. Wait, are you telling me that's why he was arrested? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. He was the only one without an alibi. Oh, is that so? Yep. Other than the victim, the suspect, and Miss Tenma, the only others around were Mr. Filch and Mayor Tenma's aide, and the two of them were together at the time. Filch, the guy who tried to steal my bracelet. Just living up to his name, I guess. We should go talk to him again when we have a chance. What about Jinxie? She's not being suspected at all? She may have no alibi whatsoever, but she also has no motive. It's unfathomable that she would murder the Alderman and pin the crime on her father. Besides, do you really think a little girl could lift up this huge spear? Yeah, true enough. That spear looks even bigger than her. That's about all I can reveal at this time. Well, you must admit, Damien Tenma appears to be the most likely suspect. I admit it looks bad, but I'm still not buying it. Oh, and one more thing. I must warn you about the prosecutor. The prosecutor assigned to Mayor Tenma's trial. That's the one. He's, how shall I put it, not what you'd expect. That is, unless you've faced a convicted killer serving hard time as a prosecutor before. What the? Is this some kind of joke? Can I ask why a man in prison for murder is serving as prosecutor? Because he's mastered the use of psychology in courtroom battles. Everyone's talking about how this murder was the work of some strange creature. But Yokai, you're nothing more than a figment of the imagination. They're baloney! Who better to prove this than a master of psychology? He's the best man for the job. But he's a convicted murderer! No matter how you look at it, that's just insane! Well, the chief prosecutor personally assigned him, so... None of us are in a position to question the matter. <laughs> this really is the dark age of the law. This prosecutor... He wouldn't happen to go by the name Black Quill, would he? Bingo! Simon Blackwell. So you have heard of him. You could say that. What's that supposed to mean? Well, I bet you don't know his unofficial title. Ever heard of the Twisted Samurai? That's Prosecutor Blackwill! The Twisted Samurai? Is that because he's a criminal? Well, yes and no. You could say it also has to do with the effect his crime had on things. How so? His conviction is what twisted and warped the legal world into this dark age of the law. What?! And he, of all people, is going to stand in court tomorrow. <laughs> Never fear! I myself will be there to protect you. That's reassuring, I guess. Well, you kids knock yourselves out. Can't wait to see how you do tomorrow. Wait, Detective Fulbright. I've been meaning to ask you something. Um, why are you barefoot? This doesn't look like the sort of place where you need to take your shoes off. Hmm. Ah! Ah! I hadn't even noticed! Why am I barefoot? You honestly hadn't noticed until just now. 
Wait a second. Those shoes we found earlier! Excuse me, Detective Fulbright? These wouldn't happen to be your shoes, would they? Yes! Yes, they are! My favorite pair, in fact! Thank you for bringing them to me! You must truly be on the side of justice! Don't tell me Mr. Filch actually stole from a detective! Stealing shoes right off of someone's feet. That's pretty amazing. I find it more amazing that Detective Fulbright didn't notice. Well, looks like we've gotten all we can out of the detective, so let's see. Maybe we should go have a word with Mr. Filch. I want to hear what his alibi is. This is just awful. T terrible, I say. Somebody, help! Oh, look, it's Mr... What was it again? Finch? No, no, no. The name's Filch. Phineas Filch. Keep on pilfering and you may wind up a jailbird instead. So, what seems to be the problem, Mr. Filch? Oh, it's just terrible. Terrible, I tell you. Come quick! Okay? What's the deal with him all of a sudden? Looks like some kind of mask. It's the Amazing Nine Tails mask! The Amazing Nine Tails? Oh, right! The wrestler who appeared during the festival special event. What's his mask doing here? He'd never take off his mask like this. Someone must have killed him. What? Who would do such a thing? Let's go talk over there in private. Look! There's some white hair caught up inside this mask. So what makes you believe that the Amazing Ninetales has been murdered? You really want to know, eh? You're a studious one, ain't ya? <laughs> yes, I mean, no, I mean, just tell me, please. Well, it's like this. I dreamed of becoming a wrestler myself. Hey, how about you join me in the quest for the champion's belt, huh? What a team! Me in my bandit's mask, and you in the demon mask of yours. <laughs> demon mask? <laughs> Wonder if I could make it big. Apollo, let's save your pro wrestling debut until after the trial. Huh? Oh, no, no. I wasn't actually. Ah, uh, why did I let him pull me off topic like that? Come on, Apollo. Ask him about the amazing Ninetales murder already! The amazing Ninetales is our village's savior, and don't you forget it! His trademark's gold cape, to look like nine fox tails. He whirls through the ring, smacking down Tenma Town wrestler left and right! He sparked the monster craze, revitalizing Nine Tails' veil in the blink of an eye. Yep, saved our village from becoming a ghost town. Now it's a yokai town. Huh. <laughs> the amazing Nine Tails really does sound, well, amazing. Yeah, pretty amazing, huh? That's why he's worshipped like a hero around here. I'm proud to be in the same village as him. Come to think of it, you look kind of monster like yourself, Mr. Filch. Guess it makes sense since you're from the same village as the Amazing Ninetales. <laughs> I know. A lot of people have told me I look like a yokai. 
Since when was that a compliment? Ow! What's the big idea? <laughs> Check your pocket. Hey, how'd you do that? Keep it. I got lots more. So, you keep saying that the amazing Ninetales was killed. What's the story behind that? Are you saying he was murdered because his mask washed up along the river outside? That's only part of it. The main reason is no one's seen him since the special event. The word round Ninetales Vale is he was killed by ten Terra. You villagers are really superstitious, aren't you? That we are. We love conspiracy theories too, like Mayor's diabolical plot. The mayor? Of Tenma Town? What is he plotting? Rumor has it he's planning on releasing Tenma Taro. That's why he wants the merger. He'll open the Forbidden Chamber once he's in control. That's quite a tale. Ain't finished yet. There was only one person who could stop the mayor. Our hero, the Amazing Nine Tails. He vowed to battle the mayor of Tenma Town and stop the municipal merger. I couldn't make this stuff up if I tried. Apollo, we still have to ask him about the Alderman's murder, remember? Mr. Filch, would you mind telling us what you were doing at the time of the murder? I was in the caretaker's office, guarding the entrance like Mr. Kayubi said I should. And I made double sure no one came in. I had a clear view of the town foyer from where I work. He must be talking about this small room in the upper right. It definitely looks like you can keep track of the comings and goings from there. And you have an alibi to back your statement up, Mr. Filch? <laughs> I do indeed. I was with Mayor Tenma's aide. Florent LaBelle is his name. So, the two of you were together. That's a pretty sound alibi, all right. And nobody came in or out of the manor around the time of the murder. Kept watching here the whole time. Didn't see a soul pass by. And if anyone did, then their security camera would have spotted him. So no one came in or out around the time of the murder. That means we're dealing with someone who was already inside when it happened. So, do you think this mask is the real deal? Without a doubt, this here is the mask worn by the amazing Nine Tails. What about that white hair I found inside the mask? Wait, I just thought of something. Remember the golden animal fur we found at the crime scene? Could it have come from this mask? Look, there's even a spot where some fur is missing. Hmm. Then this places the mask at the crime scene at some point in time. Which means... What does this mean? Someone with white hair who is linked with the murder and is against the merger. No way. Could the amazing Ninetales and the Alderman actually be? Something wrong, Apollo? You should see the look on your face. Oh, no, it's n it's nothing. Maybe Jinxie could tell us something since she works here.